Game 6, Clay racked up his 10th career playoff outing with at least 7 threes made. My fellow Torontonian Andrew Wiggins owns the dub's highest plus minus outside of Draymond, and while Curry hasn't shot the most efficient, the chef's continued aggressiveness has allowed him to average a team best by far, 27 points per game, through two rounds of the postseason. You're about to see an in-depth breakdown of why the Golden State Warriors 2022 playoff monster is complete. Before continuing, only 11.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. Lastly, stay updated on the NBA and the channel by following me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Whether you're a fan of him or not, Klay Thompson regaining practically full form after an ACL tear and an Achilles rupture on each of his legs is great to see. Another fact that's undeniable is that the three-time NBA champion thrives off the intensity of a playoff environment deep in a series. But with the Warriors turning it over a hefty 17 times on the evening, playing some sloppy basketball while getting locked up by Memphis, Clay's poised to knock down triples, whether it was off the bounce or spotting up, was decisive in the Game 6 victory. When the feisty young Grizz kept counterpunching, Thompson stayed locked in, a focus which even maintained itself when the game was already out of reach. Earning the nickname of Game 6 Clay, the five-time All-Star has at least 25 points in six of his last seven Game 6s. With Thompson's all-time great shooting release back in the lineup and at full strength, the Warriors' offense has reached its peak for the first time in years. As Draymond Green once said, each member of the Warriors' Big Three, in he, Clay, and Steph, are equally as valuable to the Warriors' success. Considering the facts that the Warriors lost in the play-in without Thompson in 2021, were a bottom-feeding team the year before that when Steph broke his left hand, and were a 500 team when Draymond missed 36 games this past season, that statement from Green has some validity to it. Five NBA Finals appearances and three rings over the past decade have everything to do with Steph, Dre, and Clay playing fluidly as an elite three-man unit. It all starts with the face of the franchise and the NBA in Stephen Curry. The greatest shooter of all time is also an extremely underrated slasher with his speed off the dribble and finesse around the hoop. But the key to the Warriors unlatching their offensive movement and flow as a whole is how Steph's able to relocate to spots around the perimeter and swiftly act as a decoy. The man's ability to work when he doesn't have the ball is exceptional, but can go overlooked. Curry would be a superstar who influences winning anywhere he goes, of course. Same thing goes for one of the greatest defenders in the history of this game, and the future Hall of Famer rounding out the power forward spot. Draymond's all-time great combination of versatility, lateral movement, and of course all-out hustle, plus unmatchable toughness, acts as the backbone to not just Golden State's defense, but their entire system and culture. On the other side of the court, Green's passing and ability to push the pace in transition with his ball handling perfectly complements the Splash Bros. The reigning two-time MVP Nikola Jokic rightfully gets the credit he deserves for being the best passing center of all time, but you rarely see people give Draymond any attention for his ability to make pinpoint passes as a big man. Despite getting hated on for not looking at the rim offensively, Green's value is proven in his plus-minus. Among players who've averaged at least 30 minutes on the Warriors, Draymond's a full plus 23 ahead of any other Warrior, and then, as displayed in Game 6, the pure marksman in clay provides Golden State's ball handlers with a crucial perimeter outlet, and you can clearly see the five-time All-Star's legs are starting to reach full strength when he's creating opportunities for himself after coming off a screen and roll and pulling up for contested deep-range bombs from 30. Not only does a full-strength Clay Thompson complete this Warriors monster, but Air Canada Andrew Wiggins hasn't gotten nearly enough love for his perimeter defense and timely shot creation on the wing. Two-way Wiggs was a game-high plus 20 in Game 6, finishing with 18 points, draining three triples, but what'll go unnoticed is the 11 rebounds and six offensive boards that Andrew grabbed resembling Kawhi Leonard in his Boardman Gets Paid 2019 title run for my Raptors. Speaking of rebounding, I've said it all year long throughout my Warrior videos this year, but Kavon Looney 
is the dub's unsung hero. An animal at keeping possessions alive when Golden State shooters need it most, as Klay Thompson called him postgame, Kavon Luajuan tallied an absolutely insane 22 rebounds to help close out the Grizz, with half of those boards coming on the offensive glass. Interim and future Sacramento Kings head coach Mike Brown said it was his decision to start the rookie Jonathan Kaminga instead of Kavon for Game 6, like they'd done in previous games. Credit to Brown for his honesty to admit that it was actually his veterans in Steph, Draymond, and Iguodala's idea to suggest that Looney should get the start, with Memphis looking to force Game 7. Along with Clay's great nickname for him, here's what else Thompson had to say about his underrated center after the Warriors closed it out, and he also touched on the decision from his teammates to suggest Kavon's presence to be had in the starting five, saying, Guy has elastic arms he can stretch, but Draymond, Steph, and Andre, those guys see the game, they're playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers, Draymond is like an extension of our coaching staff, and so is Steph, so it doesn't surprise me that they made that call and Loon delivered, end quote. It's amazing we've gone this entire video without mentioning the should have been most improved player of the year in Jordan Poole. Unfortunately, after lighting it up in the first three games over Memphis, in the final three games of the series, Poole suffered some inconsistencies. I may have jinxed him with this video right here, but credit to Memphis for making adjustments. And for a film room breakdown on Poole, I left a link in the description for the video thumbnail currently on your screen. But the point of mentioning Poole today is how mind-boggling it is, is with how powerful the Warriors already are in the backcourt in the first place, that they have another Splash Brother off the bench in this speedy, hard-nosed Jordan Poole, just another elite two-way player in the making for this first-class pro basketball organization in the Bay Area. Rounding out the bench, Otto Porter Jr. is extremely underrated, as people forget how lethal he was in his prime next to John Wall and Bradley Beal, in 21 and a half minutes per night, OPJ is a plus 72, good enough for second best on the team behind Draymond. Nemanja Bialica, Jonathan Kaminga, even Juan Toscano Anderson here and there have given the dubs a solid bench unit. Having said that, the devastating loss of Gary Payton II hurts this bench. But given the entire bench is motivated to play for GP2 after his tragic injury, and of course, having a Hall of Fame cast and two crucial players to provide youth in Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole, I think the Warriors have enough to overcome the loss of the young glove. Prayers to Gary on a smooth recovery process, that was a scary fall. But dealing without the services of a top perimeter defender in Peyton II, in your opinion, how does Golden State still find a way to reach their peak on both ends? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo, who says Game 7 between the Suns and Mavs is going to be a bloodbath. I expect nothing less than a great game with a close ending. I'm still picking the Mavs to win and expecting for an all-time Luka game. CP3 isn't playing like himself lately, and I think this isn't just a coincidence and this is more of a great defensive game plan by the Mavs. Let's go Dallas. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.